All right, guys, got Grady here for you. Mike, do you want to kick it off? Sure. Is that coffee, Grady? No, no coffee. <laughs> what was that? Well, I, don't know. I just saw the drink go down. I saw like, well, I thought it was a green straw. I thought maybe you like had someone get you Starbucks or something. Oh, no, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, I'm, just, I'm curious for you, from your perspective, what have teams been doing to you this year, if anything, that's been different? Than years past, um, you know, I I don't know if um if different is the is the right you know what I'm saying word. Like I always kind of got a lot of attention, and um, but that come with you know just being a a player that they that they see can you know make plays, and at the end of the day, you know that's that's nothing but respect to be honest. So I just gotta um you know figure out ways to continue to be effective when you know gathering a lot of attention and, um and you know it's just um you know just kind of one one of the things and this is a, a broader thing a little bit I'm, we're, we're working on something about super bowl and for you when you were getting ready to play that day like was there more anxiety was there a different type of feeling playing in the super bowl versus other games like is that it was that there for you like how was that different if at all uh, you know, looking back on it, it definitely was a um, surreal moment for me. Um, it was definitely an exciting time. And, um, you know, whether you call it every game the same or not, I mean, the Super Bowl is a Super Bowl. So, I mean, anybody who tell you that, you know, it's just another day, it's just another, you know, game is it's just I just it's just untrue, you know. And um, so um, it was it was definitely a special moment. And um, uh, like I just say, it's a real moment, you know, and uh, something that I would definitely like to get back, get back to and come out on top, you know, one day. And um, but but looking back on it, it was a heck of an experience and, um, you know, something that some people never get to experience. Was, were, were, was there anything that felt different for you in the pregame? Was it like more nerves? Was it more anxiety? Like you catch yourself looking around more or? Uh, I mean, you're definitely looking around, you know, taking in the environment, you know, and um, I think I remember this wasn't like a pregame. It's kind of like a, one of the pre um, pre walk through stadium things. I can't remember. If we did it the day before in in Houston. They had the, the jumbotron trunk where you're putting your roster up and your picture of you. You know what I'm saying? And my name came up with my picture. And I just was that. I mean, for me to see, you know, my name up there at the top, getting prepared to play a Super Bowl. That was an amazing moment for me. And um, and uh, I'm sure it was for everybody on the field. But, you know, just speaking from my own perspective. But uh, getting ready for the game, I mean, it's, it, I mean, this. You know, it's it's a pregame and you know pregame jitters that I, I, I kind of always get a little pregame, you know. Um, but it was nothing like out of control to where it was like, oh my god, I can't because you got to go out and perform. You know what I'm saying? I definitely say once the game start, you know, it's game time. You know, and uh, but leading up to it, you definitely know it's a special moment. Appreciate it. Thanks, Grady. Yep. Do you love Yeah, Grady. How uh, <clears throat> how does it feel that you guys are are Played in a big regular season game for the first time in a couple seasons. Yeah, man, it feels awesome. You know, um, it's been uh, it's been a while since we've been playing some meaningful games. You know, and uh, you know January now. You know what I'm saying? So December right over with now. So I mean, it's it's been it's been good and uh, definitely embracing and giving it. You know, my all each and every day. You know, definitely not taking it for granted because it's something that don't don't happen all the time. To be playing meaningful games late in late in the year. You know, and that was. Um, Coach Smith, you know, biggest thing, you know, when he came here, say hey, we want to be playing meaningful ball, you know, at the end of the season, and that's and that's where we are, you know, no matter what anything looked like before. Now we we here playing games that count, and uh, we excited to go out there and perform. Uh, as a veteran, you know that uh, you know came in and went right to the Super Bowl. Do you sense that um, y'all are building a foundation to you know pivot this thing and get back to you know being competitive in the NFC? I mean, you know, this season is still going on. We want to be competitive, you know, this year while we still got football ahead of us. You know, I think every team in it in the NFL is trying to build, you know, build a team up to be able to win the big one. So um, that we right in the mix with that. So, I mean, I feel like, uh, you know, uh, me speaking in the present, um, we're trying to get this next game, you know, trying to finish strong and let the rest take care of itself. You know, you know, we ain't never count ourselves out of anything. So um, uh, the foundation is being built every day you come into the work. And uh, the rest take care of ourselves, but we're not just sitting around waiting for something to happen. We we own it right now and trying to do the best we can. Thank you, Greg. Chris? 
Uh, Grady, I was watching your, your mic'd up and I saw you said the little comment to when you were getting kind of triple team blocked um, against Detroit. Um, and I was just wondering, are you the kind of, that wasn't really a trash talking moment, but are, are you a guy in the field who who talks trash or talks smack, uh, whether it be in a joking way, fun way at all? Or uh, Yeah, I mean, that was really just, I mean, you know, you say stuff throughout the game and you go know, back and forth, but I mean, I, I've uh, it kind of just, you know, happened. Like, I mean, I just, it wasn't like I knew I was like, my, but it's just a little, little jokey type, um, type vibes. I always know I'm going to get a lot of attention, man, but I did feel three on me that play and I was just, you know, messing with the guys, you know, they, they compete and we, I'm competing. We little laugh and go back to work, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but I mean, as far as talking trash, I feel like I used to talk more trash as a young, as a younger, um, player. Uh, now I kind of just, um, I know I'll go out there, do what I do, but I, I mean, how y'all see me on, you know, whether it's mic'd up or something, I just, you know, I'll I be serious when it's go time, but you know, I, uh, I can go, I go zero to a hundred, man. I, like it's, you know, it's good that I'm not mic'd up all the time, you know. So, um, so I, so I, I had to be cautious that I was mic'd up. <laughs> and when you say you, you've, you kind of say you've evolved from when you were younger and talking trash. Is there a reason why you've refrained from doing it as much now? And why, I'm not why? saying that I don't. I'm not saying that I don't. I, it's just, it's just different. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just uh, different. I think that's something more like you gotta. I don't know. Like, even if I do talk, I might not even realize it. Like, I really like, I'm really like, like, I could be cool, like, just so I can talk nice and, you know, cordial, like, right here. Then I could just be like, you know, hair set on fire, crazy dude that don't care about nothing. So it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it happens, it happens, but don't, it don't. And is there, is there a player or a, a, a person among your career who, has been that guy who's talked a lot, whether it be on the team or someone you played against that has stuck out to you? I don't really like a lot of people that do too much talking and make it like part of their game. Like it just, that's just me. I was like, I don't, I don't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? And it just like, it was just, I mean, if you want to talk and you're doing something, that's cool, but don't be a guy that's talking when it's up and then you don't say nothing, nothing got nothing to say when it's down, when you're down. But then if you're talking and you're down, you just look dumb. So um, I, I, I could care less about whether somebody talk or not. And one last thing. Um, I also saw when when uh, I think Kyle made that catch last game, you patted him and you said, you know, you finally did something. Um, and, and it was a joking thing. But have you, in your opinion, how has he evolved or has he evolved throughout the uh, 16, 17 weeks now we're in? Mm, yeah, man, I was just teasing him. And me and Kyle, we play around a lot. And um, so, uh, but I'm definitely happy to see his growth, you know, as the, as the year goes on. And um, just like uh, just like you guys, you see him play and everybody feel like he just, you know, scratch on surface of what it can be. I feel the same, you know. I'm his teammate, but I'm also, a, you know, a fan of his to see when he making them big, nice plays and stuff like that. And I love to see a young young man having the success he has, getting the, you know, the North Riot that he's doing and stepping up to the plate. So uh, I know the best is, you know, the best is yet to come for, for Kyle. And um, I'm definitely – um happy to see him do well, but I'm gonna go we're gonna talk that mess to each other. That's what that's what the brothers do. <laughs> Josh, you know I think. Yeah, Grady, I was wondering, I, obviously fluidity is part of an NFL roster, but given the COVID situation last year and this year, does your role as a veteran and a leader change as you see guys in and out of the availability so often? Do you feel like you have to do something differently? Whether it's the way you talk to them about being off the field or stuff you have to do in the locker room, I don't know. No, not necessarily. I don't want to say do anything differently because, um, you know, I guess my style of leadership, you know, I've been the same dude every day. You know what I'm saying? If we're running out, if we're running out there with uh, me and, you know, three rookies or me and three best have been playing for years and years, you know, we go on the same approach, you know, attack doing the best we can. And uh, you know, covering each other for your brother, you know what I'm saying? As far as fluidity in the in the in the room or uh, across the whole uh, team, you know, that's kind of, I mean, you know, it's unfortunate when you have uh, some guys get sick. You know, that's out of your control. You know what I'm saying? And 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 stuff like that. But there's always been fluidity, though. I mean, in the NFL, you know, you can be playing with a whole new group of guys one week and then a whole new another week. So I mean. It is what it is. You got to take it how it comes. Nobody going to feel for you. The game still count, and you got to get the job done.
I know that you guys have talked a lot about getting familiar with Dean's defense and how much that's helped as the season has gone on because there are a lot of moving parts, he says. When you have to change so much personnel at this point, does that make it more difficult because you are learning a new system and it does have a lot of move, moving parts? Um, I think whenever you get a uh, you know a new group of guys on the field together, I mean, there's always going to be some challenges, you know, whether whether it's um, you know a defense that you've been doing or it's something new. So, I mean, every every that's why everybody got to be, always be prepared to go out there and perform because um, you know being in the pros is always is always the next man up mentality. You only get one one shot to show that you can really go out there to you know handle the job and be on active you. And the fact that you were playing in a new defense or, you know, you ain't haven't had any reps, if you get don't do your job on this play, nobody going to care about that. Like, is there's no excuses. And um, you got to go out there and be ready for whatever defense is called, whatever personnel you're rolling with. Thanks, Greg. All right, guys, we got time for a couple of follow ups. Uh, Mike, you got one? I do. It kind of goes to kind of what Chris was asking before, but. This is something I don't think any of us will ever understand, so I'm hoping you can explain it. What's it like to be triple teamed? To be triple teamed, man, it's like um, it's like a – so, I mean, if you say, like, you're playing a block, you know what I'm saying, and you got your key guy, and you, you know, hit your, your key guy, and then you get some more pressure, which you used to, you know, you used to that second pressure, you know what I'm saying, and uh, in, your, in your mental, you ain't really used for that third one to come because everybody got to block somebody, you know what I'm saying? So in my in, in my experience, I kind of know what's being ran versus off the blocks that I'm getting. But so they really ain't no run to where I mean it's like so I know they had a bus assignment or some or maybe they just said because if they did that it should have been like two people free just to go. You know what I'm saying? But um, me, I feel like <laughs> I feel like if I knew if I knew for a fact that that triple team was coming, I really I could have stuck and hung in there. I kind of got turned up, turned out a little bit. But if I knew it was coming, I knew all that pressure was coming, I would have just. Probably just made a big old pile. No, but um, it's it's I mean it's it's what come with it, man. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be ready for whatever come. And um, like I say, um, whenever you're getting that much attention, it's uh uh you're doing something right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like I like I say, you know, I want to be a highly productive player and stuff. But I mean, even when you know production may come not coming in for it, I may want I'm I'm still um making an impact. And uh, in due time, in due time, what's gonna happen? What's happen? No, I only ask because it's not the first – that wasn't the first time that that's happened this year. I think there were a couple no, other places. That... Far from the first. <laughs> so, like, do you get, when, it, when that happens, you just sit there and be like, oh, okay. Like, like I mean, that first like, – Like, for me, it's like, you know what come with it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, um, uh, you know, uh, it's just something that, 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 that come with it. You know what I'm saying? And this is one of those – it's just one of those years. And, um, and by at the end of the day – I'm pl- I'm playing meaningful football in the end of December, going in January, and it's been years for me. So I'm doing what I got to do to um, help put this team in the best position to get to the postseason and um, and uh, continue to build on what we got. So you know, all success don't come in the form of what you may think it may look like at the beginning of the year, but you know, I'm gonna take it how it come and keep grinding. All right, guys. Thanks, Freddie. Happy New Year. Yep, Happy New Year. See you guys.